of sins that have happened and um, uh, serious things that have happened in the past and involvement with the occult, sacrifices, um, rituals, uh, and frankly, sometimes we just don't know what to do and to make sure that none of that has any effect or any um, hindrance to their new Christian walk. And so um, we have found a group called Freedom in Christ Ministries, and we're being blessed to be participating in some training with them this week. Um, here's some more pictures. That's me holding a little chick in the bottom. And that at the top is a lizard that they scared me with, but there's all kinds of critters out there. Um, these are just some of the buildings. It looks really old in those pictures, and parts of it are really old, but um, some of the buildings are much newer. This is the, yeah, this is us having our class in the bottom, and this is the, just all the guys in the top. And um, there's a farm right beside the Shakata that has a pond, and that's where they do the baptisms. So this was the last um, group that was baptized a few weeks ago. And, okay, so now I'm going to tell you about one of the guys out at the Shakata, uh whose name is Bruno. And um, he's 21 years old. And I just want to read you his testimony. Uh, we asked him, would you want to write something that we're going to share with the people in the United States. And he just immediately went and sat down and within 10 minutes had written this whole thing up. And um, I think you'll be blessed by it. I think you will grow in your faith and in your Christian walk by listening to this brand new 21-year-old Christian and the depth of understanding that the Lord has already given him about his new life. That's what he calls it, Bruno, new life. He says, my story started really early. When I was seven years old, my mother was murdered by my stepfather. But when I learned the truth about how she died, I was 16 years old. This was a shock for me. I became very rebellious, quit school, and started hanging out with people who had also had traumas in their lives. I started to smoke, hiding it from my father. But before I knew it, I was already addicted to cigarettes without him ever knowing. Pretty soon, he found out, and this was the beginning of me being really lost. I began getting in fights and selling drugs. I was growing up and turned 18. Three days after I turned 18, I went to jail for selling drugs. For me, this was hitting the bottom of the barrel. I think it's funny that he says hitting the bottom of the barrel right now, and then he continues to tell a bunch of other really bad stuff that happened after that. So the barrel got even deeper. But at that point, that was the bottom of the barrel. In jail, I used cocaine and crack for the first time and found myself falling deeper and deeper. After I got out of jail, I went right back to selling drugs, but this time I didn't just sell them, I used them too. Time went on. My brother was murdered, so we moved to another place to live. So he's lost his mom and his brother. My life was already bad, but it got even worse. I started stealing cars and motorcycles and committing many minor crimes. I went to jail several times and started living in the streets, struggling in many ways. But God had been searching to hear my heart and already had a plan for my life. And the word he used there, when I put searching to hear, he used the word that we, we the only translation we have for it is like a sonar. Like if you're going out in, in the ocean to look for something using sound waves. So it wasn't like God just casually heard. God was searching to hear. And he heard Bruno's heart. And here's what happened. <laughs> On December 4th of 2013, this has just happened, I was selling drugs in a slum. I was in an alley counting money. When I looked in front of me, there were three police officers, and they told me to put my hands on my head, and they handcuffed me, pushed me to my knees, and started to beat me with a piece of wood that was laying on the ground nearby. After they hit me a few times with the wood, they picked up a piece of iron and beat me in the head and on the hands. I thought they were finished with me, but then they started to choke me until I passed out. Even as I lay passed out on the ground, they didn't stop. They started kicking me until I bled, 
and they got a plastic bag and put it on my head so I couldn't get any air. I was in bad shape, bleeding and drooling a lot. They pushed my head against a wall, and I saw Jesus in my head. So I called out to Jesus, If you will save my life, I will follow you. After about five minutes, they let me go. They took my money and the drugs I had and told me to get out of there. I didn't think twice, and I ran away, but I didn't forget the promise I had made to God. So I went to a drug rehab center of Pastor Isaias, Pastor Isaiah. It's the man that we work with at the rehab farm. I stayed one day, then two days, then three days. That's when I met Kevin and his family, who were a channel of blessing in my life. They always helped me spiritually, and I developed a strong connection with their family. I finished my nine months of rehab and was given a great opportunity for a job. Um, here's Bruno at a, a wedding with us and with Giovanni, and then I think the next picture is him at his new job. Yeah. I am praying that it works out, and it did. But Jesus has already given me the victory on the cross of Calvary. I am very grateful to God that he put these people in my life, many different people, who through God's mysterious ways are reaching out to me with wisdom and understanding. I want all of you to know that there is a way out for those who believe and who give themselves over to the Lord. It isn't always easy. It's hard sometimes. You must be willing to surrender. Thank you so much, God. Thank you so much, Jesus. So... Um, you know, I can't tell you how many times, that's just one story of many that we hear of people who just happen to be born in the wrong place, in the wrong family. And let me just publicly right now thank my mom and dad. I have never known what it feels like to not be loved. I've never known what it feels like to be scared or to be lost because I was born to two people who just filled me up with love. And many of you were too, and, and Kevin was too. And, you know, we have just been so thankful over and over and over again for our parents and um, the blessing it is to have the kind of background that we have. But then one day I was reading John 1, verse 12 and 13. Um, let me just start with verse 10. It says, talking about uh, Jesus, the true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Now here's the part. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. So Bruno and many others that we know didn't have the good grace to be born in a family like mine but they get to be reborn. They get to be born of God, and they get to be born again into a new family. And those of us who have plenty of love are just privileged to share some with them, you know. Um, I treat these guys like they're my kids. Um, I'm really not old enough to be any of their mothers. <laughs> really, I'm old enough to be all their mother. But um, anyway, um, you know, I can't allow them to live in our home. I, I can't do that. But I can allow them to come and eat with us. And I can give them counsel. And I can um, give them a fussing if they need one. And I have. And so they get to be born again. They get to be born again into a new family. And you guys are part of that family for them, too. So thank you for helping us be there to be able to serve them. It's been a very uh, rewarding and fruitful uh, thing to be a part of. And we're just um, hope that only more good things are to come. So I'm going to let Kevin finish now.
going to share a little bit more about this because she's too humble to, to say this. About a year and a half ago, Benet started a, um, uh, a prayer group at the kids' school um, for women, for moms. And it started off small, three or four women, and uh, it's, it's grown. It's not huge, but there's more women that are involved in that now. And one of the women that uh, participates in this is Karis, our daughter, her best friend's mom. <coughs> this woman is the owner of this hair salon. So we ask these guys when they're getting close to finishing their nine months, you know, what do you want to do? What, what's something God's put on your heart? He wants to do hair. And so Benet immediately thought of our friend. And she went and asked her if they would be looking for anybody. And she said, no, you can have him come and talk to us. He got a job there because of this prayer group that started a year and a half ago before we ever knew Bruno. And what he does, if you look, if you could see to the right, there's a small um, parking lot, maybe for six cars. The women will park in there. Bruno goes to get them, and he walks with them to the front door. And then after they get their hair done, he walks. That's his job. Um, but he's super happy that he has this job. And the owner, uh, the husband of this wife who participates in this prayer group, he's already talked to Bruno. He's giving him counsel about just hang in there and do this well, and I'll teach you how to cut hair. And so he's already on the path to do what what he wants to do. Um, and that all came about from uh, a, a small group of, of women that meet at the, the kids' school once or twice a month. Go ahead and play. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story about a guy named Hobson, but this is Nadell. He plays a part of this. <coughs> Nadell is 40. He's had a long history of addiction to um, everything. Um, when we say everything, crack, cocaine, alcohol, prostitution, whatever you can think of, that's pretty much what all these guys have done. Nadell graduated from the Shakata in March, and he's been out, and he is a part of our church family. Uh, most Sundays after worship, he eats lunch with us. Um, he has, he's a handyman. He's done uh, painting and different things in our house. And we just love him. He's, he and Giovanni are big buddies. Uh, they have a lot of the same characteristics. He's the sixth child, youngest of six kids, just like Giovanni. Three boys, three girls, just like our family. Um, super picky about food, right, Giovanni? Yeah. Uh, and so... The last time we were together in the car, we made a stop somewhere, and Nadell ran in to get cookies at a grocery store, just so he and Giovanni could eat cookies in the back seat of the car. Anyway, he plays a part in, in this story. He's, he's got a real heart for rescuing guys off the street. And in May, he saw Hobson. Hobson is a guy who's been in and out of the, the Shakata. He was actually there last year, and Benet and I celebrated our 25th anniversary, and we took about a three-day trip to another state. When we came back, he was in the shock, and when we came back, he was gone. Nobody knew where he went. This was October of last year. May of this year, Nadeo saw Hobson on the street. Cold night. He just had shorts, flip-flops on. You could tell he was using drugs again. And Nadeo said, come on, let's go to the shock. And he said, no, I'm not going. He said, I want to go because I want to go, not because I'm cold, not because I'm hungry. I want to go because I know I need to go, <coughs> which I respect. Um, about a month later, Nadell said, let's go find him. So we took a day and went to the streets, and we found Hobson. And I think <coughs> now's a good time to read his testimony. I did the same thing with him. I asked him one day, I said, look, I, we want to share what God's doing. Would you want to share your testimony? And he said, absolutely. And about three days later, we came back, and 
this is what he had written for you guys. He entitled it, A Cry for Help. And he starts it with Psalm 2710. Even if my father and mother abandon me, the Lord will hold me close. My name is Hobson Marchines dos Santos. I am 31 years old. I was, and he underlined was, a drug addict. I used crack, cocaine, and marijuana for seven years. I've already robbed, beaten, and hurt lots of people to get more crack. I've mainly hurt my five-year-old son by not being a dad to him. I've been cold, I've been hungry, and I've been thirsty. I've had so many pains, as much in my body as in my soul. One day I was really hungry and I found a bag of meat. When I was eating the meat, I started to smell a dead animal smell. I looked at the meat and it was full of maggots. God was showing me that the devil was humiliating me. I was born into an evangelical home, but I never really let God be a part of my life. One day the devil took me to some woods to smoke crack. When I was smoking crack down there, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit crying out to me, Stop, stop, you're going to die. Enough, you're going to die, stop. I started to cry, and I cried out to God for help. My soul cried out for help, but I didn't have the strength to leave the streets, and there wasn't anyone to help me. Crack was killing my body and my dreams. One day, a friend and I were in a dumpster looking for something to eat when the story of my life began to change. A woman came close to us and asked what we were doing. I told her we were looking for some food. She looked at me with deep, piercing eyes and said, I'm an angel sent by God to help you. I didn't pay much attention to that. She told us to follow her, and we did. We walked down a road and stopped. She told us to wait there because she was going to get us something to eat. She crossed the street and went down another street. After seven minutes, I have no idea how he knows it was seven minutes. He doesn't own a watch. He, but after seven minutes, she returned with cheese, bologna, and some chocolate milk. She calmly looked at me and said, that God sent to help you find a place to go get free from the drugs. Okay, sure, I thought. <clears throat> I left and went to a bus stop and sold all the food she had given me for five hay ice. That's our currency, and that's about $2, so that I could buy some more crack. I told my friend we needed to return to get more food and make more money. He said, no, let's go down this road to the right. I didn't want to. We don't normally go down that road, but on that day we did. To my surprise and happiness, Nadeo and Kevin were there. Kevin was pointing his finger at me. Immediately, the Holy Spirit touched me. He said, right there is your help. I said to my friend, let's go together, but he didn't want to. When I got in Kevin's car, he told me that he and Nadeo had looked everywhere for me. They couldn't find me, so they parked the car and prayed. God put Hobson in our path. When Kevin got out of the car, he took one step, turned around, pointed his finger, and said, Look, Nadale, it's Hobson. <laughs> Kevin said that he was sick the day before and couldn't go with Nadale to try to find me. If they had gone down the day before to the same place, they would not have found me because we were in a different neighborhood. Thank you, God. Today has been four months since I allowed God to be a part of my life. He gave me a family. He gave me Bruno, Anderson, Nadeo, Kevin, Benet, Alexandre, Marcio, Cristiano, Elder, and all of you in the United States. Benet was able to get me some glasses and a Bible study seminar to do next year. I've also done my inner healing ministry with Kevin and Benet. I later found out that the same week that I decided to go to the rehab farm, my young friend that was with me that day was arrested and put in jail. <clears throat> the police were after us, and I didn't even know it. Psalm 30, 11, You have turned my mourning into joyful dancing. You have taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. He says we should extend a hand to help a soul that is crying out for help. And then he ends by saying, As a deer longs for water, so my soul longs for you. <clears throat> That day that we found him, um, the day before I was, Nadeo had called me and said, let's go, and I was sick. I couldn't, I was 
I don't remember if I had a bad cold or something, but I did not feel like going. I said, I can't go. <clears throat> and if I'm honest, the day that we found Hobson, I didn't want to go. I was still not feeling well. And then they all said, come on, let's go, let's go. And we went. We went where Nadell had seen him the month before. Couldn't find him anywhere. Nadell was coming this way. He normally goes that way, like he said, but th that day his friend told him to go this way. <clears throat> we were going this way. We thought we saw him down this one street, and we took the turn, and it ended up not being him, and that set us on a different path where we ended up parking the car. Nadell just said, let's just park. Let's just park and try to walk and find him. And I said, okay. We opened our doors. I said, shut them. Let's shut them. Shut them. I said, we got to pray and ask God to put Hobson in our path. It's obvious we can't find him on our own. We did that, prayed, and just like Hobson said, we got out of the car, shut the door. I took one step and just went, Nedale. <clears throat> and immediately Hobson saw us, and he had a smile on his face. It was like God was just gift wrapping us to it, him to us. Um, we walked over the street, and I said, let's go to the shock. And he said, all right, let's go. He was ready. Um, this picture here, this is a woman from our church named Marcia. She works at an eyeglass place. <coughs> she told Benet one day, she said, I think if I talk to my boss, we can get Hobson some glasses. Hobson is blind. And every time we have our Bible study, he's doing, you can tell he can't see anything. She said, I think if, we, if I talk to my boss, we can get glasses for cost. Would you guys be willing to help? We said, yeah, sure. So I picked him. He came home with us one day after our, our, our day at the rehab farm. The next day, we took him to see Marcia. Marcia fitted him for glasses. About $60 that was shared between different people in our church, and he's got new glasses. And we didn't, we didn't do anything. It wasn't our idea, which I love. After lunch that day, Anderson had soccer practice, and so we took Hobson with us. <coughs> and after practice... To take him back to the rehab farm, we had to go by where we found him. And I said, you want to go find your friend? He said, let's do it. So we went. Hobson knew, obviously, everywhere where this guy might possibly be. Couldn't find him. And he said, let's make a stop. I said, all right. And we stopped at a house that you wouldn't believe how, how bad the house was uh, as far as just run down, he goes up to the gate, claps his hands. That's how, uh, that's our doorbell in Brazil a lot of times. You clap your hands. A lot of people don't have doorbells, so you clap your hands. This little older black woman, no teeth, came out. Smile went from ear to ear when she saw Hobson. It was the angel <coughs> who had uh, been sent by God to get him off the street. She said, I told you, I knew, I knew God was going to save you. I knew. He just gave her a big hug, and then he said, come over here. He brought her to the car, and he pointed, he introduced her to me and Anderson and said, I want you to meet my family. When <clears throat> when Hobson was one, his dad took him into a bar, and we have <clears throat> a type of alcohol called cachaça. It's the cheapest. We were sharing in another church this morning. The only thing I could compare it with maybe is moonshine. It's just the cheapest alcohol you can buy. His dad took him into the bar <coughs> and traded Hobson for a bottle of cachaça. And the owner of this bar and his family raised him. And I laugh when he, he says I was raised in evangelical home. His family never treated him like a son. He never had love like Benet talked about. And just to hear him say, this is, he didn't introduce us as, this is Kevin, this is Anderson. He said, this is my family. 
and she just loved on us. <clears throat> I just I love how God has uh, worked in his life. Um, he's got a great understanding of the word, and he has a desire to be in ministry when he gets out of the rehab farm, and we want to help him do that. This seminary class that he talked about also comes from Benet's Bible study. There's a woman in that, in that group, the, the prayer group, I say Bible study, the prayer group, whose dad is a pastor of a big church in Brazil, and they're offering a seminary class next year. Hobson's going to do it, and Nadell's going to do it with them. <coughs> God is pretty cool. Okay, go to the next one. <coughs> um, super important. One of the things that God spoke to us last year about why we should get involved with these guys while they're in the rehab farm because it, it didn't make sense for us to wait until nine months were over and then go to them and go, you know, we've got this cool church you need to be a part of. You need to come. They need to know us. They need to be friends with us. They need to trust us. And that's not going to happen after nine months and all of a sudden they get out and all of a sudden here comes this American couple saying, you know, come be a part of our church. We need to get to know them on the inside of the, the rehab farm. <coughs> There's a lot of guys that have already graduated and are doing well. And this is a group that we started in May. These guys have been out for anywhere from nine months to four or five years. And we get together once a month and just have some time laughing and eating and planning this ministry. And then one Sunday a month, we take this group. And we go and worship with the men at the rehab farm. We put our money together. We buy some food. We bless them with some food. We play soccer. <coughs> um, we just have fun. This is the women, the wives of our group, helping with lunch and Garrett playing soccer with some of the guys there. And then this is what our group looks like when we go and we eat lunch together. And it's an amazing blessing. <coughs> you can flip one more, Benet. We just have fun hanging out. And there's already, since we started this, there's already a couple guys that have gotten out, and they're already plugged into this group. And it's, you know, who better to walk with these guys and to bless these guys than guys who have already done it? <coughs> I've never been addicted to crack. I've never been an alcoholic. Um, we can be there and do what God asks us to do, but I can never tell these guys, I understand. I know what you're feeling. I know what you're going through. These other guys can. And so we're really excited about this ministry. Uh, the picture on the left is Nadeo in front of his new house that he just rented. He's super proud of it. He took us by there one day, and um, we're really excited for him. <coughs> The picture up top is a wedding. Uh, one of the recent graduates got married and invited us to the wedding. And that's his wife down below talking to Benet. Um, already, uh, marriage counseling possibilities have come up through, um, through this ministry. I mean, the stories that we've shared with you guys, if we had every man write a testimony, it would sound similar to that. And so how in the world do we expect these guys to come out <coughs> and know how to be a good dad, know how to be a good husband? They don't. It's unrealistic. Um, and so that's something that, that we're going to do when we get back, starting with this couple. She has specifically asked, um, thank you, she's specifically asked Benet if we could help. Thank you, Alan. Um, I'm going to flip to the last one. This is Hobson, the top left, the day we took him to get his glasses. These other two guys, the one on the left is named Anderson, and the one on the right is Christian. And they were all together at the rehab farm 
years ago. And I just I love this because they love being around each other. They're so happy for Hobson that he's doing well. And you can just see that. They work at a grocery store. So we went in to take Hobson just to see them at the grocery store. And I just love the smiles on their faces. <coughs> Down below is Bruno in our house. Um, just last week, he comes over and eats lunch with us. Sometimes he'll spend the night. He and Garrett, Garrett will share his room with them, which is something else that I think is super cool. A year ago, our son is in his last year of high school, and Bruno's getting beaten up by the police for selling drugs. And today, they're, they're brothers in Christ, and they love being around each other. I love that. This picture on the right is a picture that we took off Facebook this morning. Last night, um, our post-ministry group met without us. We told them last month, we're not going to be in October. You guys just do it. And they did it. They got together, and Bruno's the one who took the picture. They've already included him in this group. <coughs> so um, well, on the bottom left here, for those of you guys who, who get our emails, you remember Lenny, who uh, had cancer, surgery a couple years ago, and then three months ago she had a big stroke. Um, this is her just last week. She's walking on her own. She's moving her arm on her own. The only thing that hasn't completely uh, returned back to normal Giovanni's going, it's her speech. <coughs> but um, she comes over to our house on Sunday, goes to church with us and spends the night with us, and then she goes to the rehab farm with us on Monday. And that's, she's a blessing to those guys out there. I love the fact that she can't talk the way she wants to, but she is still a part of that ministry. Um <coughs> Seems like I'm forgetting something. Anybody have any questions? Well, selfishly, I would love to see more people come down and visit. <coughs> I would love to be able to, for us to be able to share and just to be able to look out and, and people just nod their heads because they've given these guys a hug and um, it's, I, I was just thinking the first time I went to the Ukraine, Benet and I were supposed to go together. And it ended up she couldn't go the last minute. She, we needed the money, and she had gotten a part-time job, and it was right at the time I was supposed to go. We were supposed to go, and, and so I just said, I'm, I'm not going to go either. And she said, no, I think you need to go. And I thought, you're nuts. I'm not going halfway around the world without you, leaving you and the girls here. We just had our two oldest kids at the time. She said, no, I really think you need to go. <coughs> and I didn't know what I was going to – I didn't feel prepared or adequate to go do something like that. But – I went, and it it changed my life. Um, you know, I thought I was going to go and, and bless these people with something, a Bible study. I don't know what I was thinking, but they completely, uh, the people in, in Ukraine completely, God used them just to change my entire life. We're in Brazil now because she made me go to the Ukraine. Um and so I just I know what a what a trip like that can do to your heart, and I don't know the the director Isaiah always tells us that <coughs> that this place uh, that that place is part of our DNA now, and it is, and so in my mind I can just already visualize what a group from here could do down there and what a, a group down there would do to a group from here. I just, that would be a, a huge blessing both ways.
Do you have anything to name? <coughs> um, this guy on the left with the hat and the ugly shirt, um, that's our rival team that Garrett's friend over here, Elias, that's his team, and we, we hate that team. So he is a, he's a recovering everything addict, and um, he's a rapper, and he's made some CDs. He's got a wife, a Christian rapper. <coughs> he's got a wife and a small child, and about four months ago, Matt, Rabine, who was here this morning, uh, ate lunch with us. He goes to Fourth Avenue in, in Franklin. They decided to help pay a salary to Elder is his name. <coughs> it's about $200 a month, $250 a month. Do like a little trial basis, six-month period of kind of letting him have like an internship of, of going out. Banana and I go, well... Uh, we go out together on Monday, and then I go out Friday. She's not able to go both days. And Garrett, most, most days, goes with me, too. Elder and his wife, they go out Tuesday and Thursday um, because of this, this salary that 4th Avenue. And Matt was talking today. They, they think they're going to continue doing that. And he does a Bible study with them, but um, it's a little bit different than what we do. He'll, he'll bring a verse. He'll have a verse that he wants to share, and he'll share that. And then he just talks to him in a way that, again, we can't talk to him because he's experienced all this. His wife can have input because she's helped her husband to not fall. Um, <coughs> and then they, they play soccer together. And so there are more people. There are some pastors that come at night. <coughs> the the brother-in-law of the director is a pastor of a church and also a every, uh, recovering everything addict. He goes on Friday nights and has worship with them. And then another pastor comes, I think, on Tuesday nights and has worship with them. Um, and then they, during the day, they have, I don't know if we had a picture of them in a circle. I think we had a picture of them in a circle. Two or three times a day, they get together and, and just pray in a circle. And they... Keep going. One more. Yeah, the top left. 10 o'clock and 3 o'clock, they get together, <coughs> and we hold hands and we pray. And we all pray out loud in a loud voice. And Hops the other day, when we were getting ready to come, he said, hey, let me ask you something about your church. I said, okay. He said, when you guys pray, do you pray like we do? I said, no, we don't, we don't pray like that. And he's like, okay. He was just, it's, they were just trying to figure out, you know, how our worship is different, our, our time together. But um, so they have, they have those times during the day where they sometimes have individual Bible study, um, we have our Bible studies twice a week. Elder does what he does twice a week, and then they have a couple of pastors that come in two nights a week to have a worship with them. They do manual labor. They grow their own, a lot of food. Uh, they just planted corn and beans and onions, and uh, they have lettuce and hyping manioc. Yeah, there's a, a root there that they, it's, it's good, um, but they grow a lot of that. The, the place where we have the baptisms to the side, uh, it's, a farm, it's another farm to the side. <coughs> uh, the wife of the man of that farm, she works in a, like a, a restaurant, and all the extra food she'll bring home and donate to this place. And so they typically always have meat. They'll have bread. They'll have. Um, this is a this is a faith led ministry because they have no money. 
They don't have any money. I don't know how they do what they do. Benet was talking. We were talking to Isaiah, Isaiah the other day, the director. <coughs> and I forget what you asked. I forget what hap- how we got in the conversation, but something came up with, how are you going to pay for that? We just said faith. I just, and it's not a, it's a very humble, it's not obviously, you know, uh, well, my faith is going to, it's just faith. I don't, I don't know how we're going to pay for it, but I have faith that God will provide, and he does. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it gets cold where we are. Uh, we have a winter, but it feels colder than what it is because we don't have insulation and we don't have central heat. And in uh, the summer, we don't have central air, and so it gets in your house and stays. But rarely <coughs> will it get below freezing. So they can grow, and they do. They use a lot of their land for, for plants for growing things. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you guys for letting us share. Thank you for coming. Um, I think we'll have Alan come up and lead us in a closing prayer. Um, we'll have sign-ups next Sunday for those that want to go to Brazil, so please think about it. <laughs> Not really, but, but seriously, if y'all really want to go, um, Amy and I were blessed to go last year. I know Richard and Jennifer and their two oldest kids were blessed to go last year as well. Um, we can provide some information if anybody's thinking about it. Obviously, they still have a, a U.S. phone number that rings in their apartment down there. I don't ever call it. I'm just as bad as anybody else, but they'll be more than happy to talk to anybody that wants to come. They do respond to email once a month, it seems like, but eventually, you know, they'll, they'll get back to you. Um, thank y'all again for sharing. Um, and then Alan will just lead us with a prayer. Amy, do you want to come up here with Brian and you too, Jennifer and and family, and family? Yes, we we'll just if you all want to come up, we'll surround you. Anybody else that'd like to come up here and surround them, you're welcome to. We just want to want them to feel our closeness and uh, uh, send them where they're going the rest of the week and how long you're going to be out here. I know you're going to leave Wednesday from here, and then uh, we're going to leave the sixth of November. Sixth of November to go back. Anybody else like to come up? Welcome to. All right, Father, we are uh, blessed with Kevin and Benet and their family. They bless our church because we uh, get the feedback from them and of your good work and through these men and, and uh, the ladies that Benet is working with. We pray that uh, you will encourage them and uh, give them the, uh, the wisdom of how to deal with the, the, the issues, the problems that uh, the men have and um, what they see that we don't see around us often. But, uh, Father, thank you for, for their uh, being a, uh, an example of your son and uh, we pray that uh, they uh, will uh, be a light and salt in that community there in all that they do thank you for the uh, uh, Amy and and, uh, Brian and Jennifer and Richard for sharing with them and and also Spencer and has been down there and uh, some of some others but we, uh, we want to encourage them and, and keep them in our prayers and uh, know that they're doing a good work there. Father, thank you for this time we had to, to share with them today. In Jesus we pray. Amen.